WWE reportedly had prepared talent to answer CM Punk questions at Fastlane in the post-show press conference. Also, CM Punk seemingly takes a shot at AEW on his latest Instagram story. Ric Flair officially signed a multi-year contract with AEW with his energy drink becoming the exclusive energy drink partner for All Elite Wrestling. Got the ratings for this past Wednesday's edition of AEW Dynamite on TBS. And the Fox CEO explains why SmackDown was not renewed. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about CM Punk amid all of the speculation surrounding whether or not the former AEW and WWE World Champion will be at Survivor Series this year. An interesting new detail regarding WWE actually preparing talent to answer questions about CM Punk at a previous premium live event. Now, the internal line on CM Punk in WWE is, quote, not as of right now, but Fightful say they've learned more on that approach by WWE. On October 10, Fightful reported that WWE higher-ups not only denied that CM Punk had been signed by WWE, but even denied that there were any negotiations whatsoever. Now, this matched up with a report previously from Fightful a couple of weeks prior that indicated there had been some feelers gauging interest in Punk on WWE's side. Despite Punk now being the top free agent in professional wrestling and naturally were rumors beginning to swirl regarding a potential turn to WWE, nobody after WWE Fastlane was asked about it at the post-show press conference. In the event that they were asked about Punk, both Triple H and a number of WWE superstars were prepared to answer and some stars were actually prepped on it by WWE. Fightful Select are reporting that they were told that many in WWE were surprised that they weren't asked about Punk, but that the line internally on him would have been very similar to what WWE higher-ups had told Fightful previously on October 10, that there's no remaining ill will between the two sides and the possibility is always there, but that Punk wasn't signed and that negotiations weren't ongoing and that he wasn't planned for Survivor Series as of then and that fans shouldn't buy tickets with the expectation of seeing him at the PLE. Specifically, Triple H was expecting to field questions about Punk, but that never got asked, and he was planning on re responding accordingly. Now, Fightful say when they asked WWE higher-ups this past Monday if CM Punk to WWE as of right now was still a, quote, firm no, they responded confirming as much. On September 16, Punk said he's got free time for the next two months. Obviously, if any more news comes out regarding CM Punk to WWE, we'll let you know in a future video. But as of right now, it's still no. But it is quite interesting that WWE actually had Triple H and others prepped about actually having answers ready in case they were asked about the former AEW champion coming back to WWE at the Fastlane post-show press conference. Now, Punk, once again, has been active on social media, this time with a new story on Instagram. And maybe, just maybe... He has taken a shot at his former employer in AEW. He posted this today saying, quote, Sometimes your value isn't seen until your absence is felt. Now, many are taking this as maybe a nudge towards AEW collision. and Maybe the ratings this past weekend or the ratings post CM Punk. Do you think it's just Punk once again stirring up social media? And what are your thoughts on WWE actually prepping talent and the likes of Triple H about answering CM Punk questions in the event that they were asked about him? Let me know your thoughts about that. Now, if it wasn't already obvious, it's now official. Ric Flair is officially all elite. AEW released a press statement today saying, quote, AEW CEO Tony Khan today announced a multi-year deal with Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair, who surprised fans in attendance and viewers at home last week during Wednesday's AEW Dynamite show in Philadelphia, marking his historic return to TBS by appearing as Khan's special gift for the icon Sting. Flair's AEW debut comes on the heels of his longtime friend Sting impending retirement announcement, which will culminate with the Icon's final match at AEW Revolution in 2024. Over the course of their 30-year history, Flair and Sting have shared incredible rivalries, momentous matches, and a respected friendship. Khan also announced that Flair's Woo Energy will become the exclusive energy drink of AEW. During AEW show dates, select host venues will carry the clean energy drink at concession stands for fans to enjoy. In addition, the beverage will be stocked in the wrestlers' locker rooms and will also be seen on the announcer's desk during live broadcasts. Fan watching at home can experience Woo Energy by ordering via wooenergy.com. 
Quote, last Wednesday, the Nature Boy made his epic return to TBS more than 35 years since the Flair vs. Sting rivalry first began on the Superstation, said Khan. Quote, it's truly an honor to welcome the legend himself and Woo Energy to AEW. Rick cemented his legacy as one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time long ago, and now his world-renowned persona and his amazing wrestling mind will be major assets to AEW programming and our position globally. Most importantly, it's fitting that the final chapter of Sting's iconic career will unfold on TBS with Ric Flair by his side, end quote. Quote, I've been in the wrestling business for over 50 years, said Flair. Together with AEW and Woo Energy, I've never been more excited and I've never had more energy when the Nature Boy promises a show. You know it's going to go. Woo! We've all been a part of a woo moment. Time stops, crowd erupts, and people unite to celebrate the extraordinary. It's electric. You hear it, you feel it, and never forget it, said Chad Bronstein, president and chairman of Karma Hold Co., parent company of Woo Energy. This is so much more than a partnership. Together, Ric Flair, AEW, and everyone at Woo Energy will create more unforgettable moments for generations of wrestling fans. Now, because of this announcement today, Ric Flair has been doing several interviews and actually has spoken about signing this agreement with AEW, going into business with the company as well as plenty of other things we'll get to those interviews shortly but let's start with just some more details surrounding how this deal came together in the first place According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, he has confirmed the news that has broken today that Ric Flair has signed a multi-year deal with All Elite Wrestling. The former NWA, WWE and WCW World Champion, Flair debuted on last week's episode of Dynamite Surprise Sting and will be with him through some of his upcoming retirement tour. Fightful say they've learned much more about the deal, AEW's motivations and how this deal came together. The press release provided by AEW mentioned Flair's Woo Energy Drink. Sources close to Flair have told fight for that the deal was very similar to that of Randy Savage's to WCW in the mid-1990s where part of getting flair was also procuring a deal with the energy drink that would cover a significant portion if not of all of Flair's salary in all elite wrestling. In the 90s, Randy Savage departed WWF for WCW and took a lucrative sponsorship deal with Slim Jim with him. Now, Eric Bischoff had noted in the past that as part of landing the Slim Jim deal, it paid for a significant portion of Randy Savage's salary within the company at the time. When asking AEW sources about the motivations of having Flair on the roster beyond what you see on the surface, merchandising was cited as a big possibility. Between video games, action figures and general merchandise there are seen as big openings for the usage of flair if those are a part of the deal so essentially because of this sponsorship with woo energy is essentially paying for rick flair without aw having a lot of the financial burden that's certainly the line anyway from those close to flair too now, as I mentioned, uh, Flair's been doing quite a lot of interviews regarding all of this, talking about Woo Energy and talking about how this deal came together. In an interview with Variety, Flair said that he has known AEW boss Tony Khan for nearly a decade, which made discussing such a deal easy. Quote, I just reached out to Tony, Flair said. Then Tony got back to me and he said he'd be interested in that. And I wasn't selling myself. I was just selling energy drinks. And then Tony was thinking about Sting's retirement and asked if I wanted to be a part of it. Flair the made his first ever appearance for AEW, as I mentioned on Dynamite last week. Quote, I can't put it into words, Flair said of that night. It was huge. I was nervous until I walked through the curtain and then I went out like, here I go. It's where I belong. Flair and Sting have a relationship spanning over 30 years, with the two having an epic classic of a match at Clash of Champions in 1988. Likewise, Flair first began working with Shivani, of course, was in the ring at the time, 40 years ago as well. Flair then went on to praise Khan for his work ethic, noting that in addition to running AEW's three weekly shows, he's also an executive for the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL and Fulham in the Premier League here in the UK. Quote, Tony doesn't get tired and he never loses composure he's just as nice as can be and boy he's got the respect of that locker room I can tell you that Flair said and I'm not from being pushy just from being totally calm now he talks about obviously the, his uh, woo energy drink and stuff like that as well which we'll continue to talk about a bit later on as well now when it comes to any future plans with AEW Flair says the company can give him a call at any time and he will be there quote I like going the night before if I can so I can have a couple of drinks with the guys but yeah it's my life it's what I love doing he said quote I can still talk better than anybody they'll find out if they turn me loose he added with a laugh I'm dying to go one-on-one -on -one with MGF man it would get a rating too let's talk young man 
Flair also said he would love to manage Andrade El Idolo, who happens to be Flair's son-in-law, and have a chance to have a war of words with Christian Cage. And Flair was quick to quash any notion that his appearance in AEW marks any kind of bad blood between himself and WWE. He said, quote, I don't think anybody at WWE begrudges me. I've earned their respect and I respect them, he said. I haven't heard one negative word from anybody over there because I think they've earned the right. I've earned the right to go out and do what I want to do. Now, as far as Ric Flair wrestling, or bumping many people were concerned when they saw Flair in the ring last week is this going to lead to any kind of Ric Flair match of course he had his last match last year but with Ric Flair I guess never say never speaking to Mike Johnson the PW Insider Flair commented on this deal coming together he said quote I was excited it's been my life I have no problem admitting that getting the opportunity to work with Tony is something I've thought a couple of times um, at this point now where people are actually happy for me to be doing something that I enjoy so much I think they recognize the positive contributions I've made for whatever company I work for. I don't think anybody begrudges me going there from WWE whatsoever. It's not a personal issue. I'm doing what I like to do. I think I've earned that respect and I love Sting as a human, as a person, as a performer. He's one of the top three or four guys I've ever worked with. Tony Khan couldn't be a nicer guy to work for, Flair said. When asked if he might be wrestling inside of an AEW ring, Flair replied, quote, No, I don't think I will. If you're asking me if I want to, I have to be careful what I say because it never comes out the right way. I just made it very clear to everybody that I can take bumps. I have a doctor's release to do anything I want to do like that. Do I think I'll wrestle again? No. Would I like to? Obviously. I'm never going to say no. So Flair said, he doesn't think he's going to wrestle, but he can take bumps. Do you have any interest in seeing Ric Flair taking any bumps inside of an AEW ring? Now, he did actually reveal when it comes to this sponsorship deal that's really paid for himself to go to AEW. He spoke to Mark Raimondi of ESPN and Flair revealed that he actually did go to WWE first about such a deal coming together. He said, quote, here we are today marching on, making headway, going national with AEW. Out of courtesy, we ran it by WWE and they have so much going on. It's no fault of anybody with the merger and so much going on. They moved past it. It was no disrespect to us. They just weren't doing anything at the time. I ran it by Tony Khan. Tony called me. I put Chaz, uh, Chad, his business partner, on the phone, and here we are. Flair actually launched his energy drink in July of this year. Now, switching gears here to AEW Dynamite. AEW Dynamite last night on TBS. We got the ratings for the show. According to WrestleNomics, AEW Dynamite on November 1st scored 832,000 viewers. Now, this number is up from the 774,000 viewers the show scored last Wednesday, which was the lowest Wednesday viewership of 2023. Of course, last week it was actually defeated by AEW uh, previous AEW, I guess, rival, WWE NXT in terms of total viewership. This week, though, AEW Dynamite has soundly defeated WWE NXT Halloween Havoc Night 2 in total viewership as well as the ratings too. Wednesday's rating came in at a 0.28 in the 18-49 to demographic, which is up also from the 0.24 rating the show scored on October 25. Now, this is quite significant considering AEW Dynamite was up against stiff competition. It was up against Game 5 of the World Series, the NHL on TNT, and also the NBA on ESPN as well. So will AEW be very happy with those numbers, do you think? Let me know your thoughts about that too, as well as Ric Flair, all of that news in the comment section below. Finally, a bit of an update when it comes to SmackDown. Of course, we know SmackDown's going back to USA Network, but why didn't it stay on Fox? Now, WWE SmackDown will head to USA Network in October of 2024 after the current deal with Fox expires. Fox, which has been the home of WWE SmackDown since 2019, decided not to renew its deal with WWE for the blue brand. Speaking on the Fox earnings call, Fox CEO Lachlan Murdoch commented on the decision to not renew its rights with SmackDown. He said, quote, how we analyze the WWE renewal, we look at all of our sports portfolios the same way and all the new rights the same way. On the basis of analysis, on both advertising point of view, we weren't hitting advertising numbers due to the audience of WWE for our return on investment to be above the level we would accept. Also, we didn't attribute enough retransmission revenue to WWE either. It made sense for us to move on from that. They've been a great partner for many years, but quite simply, we're very disciplined and the ROI didn't meet our discipline parameters. 
we wish them luck and we've moved on from them. So what do you think about the Fox CEO's comments there regarding SmackDown maybe not delivering on certain KPIs and not delivering a return on investment that they were expecting? Is that fair on WWE? Do you think WWE will care that much that they're going to USA Network and getting paid more than they were for SmackDown on Fox? Let me know your thoughts about all of it in the comments section below. But there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts on all of the stories today in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.